everyone, join me as I make these. I turned a bad mojo day into a good one the next day. Hang on, there's two parts, and as usual, the colors I use in the project are at the end of the video. Hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get part A and part B. Later. I'm going to play with some summer brights today. I've got some fluorescent colors in here. I've also got some nice little bling in there. Actually, it's kind of like a disco ball in a, in a cup here. Um, and a nice contrast color of a deep purple. So this ought to be pretty fun, I think. So let's get to it. Let me zoom in a little bit and clear off my board here. Now, as per normal, whoop, board almost falling over there. That's not good. <laughs> uh, as per normal, my usual go-to resin is Stone Coat resin um, and their particular brand uh, called Art Coat. And the reason why I picked that is because of many different reasons. One, it has a high UV protection, low VOCs. I like that part, particularly with working with it. Um, and it's also got some scratch resistant properties as well as heat resistant properties to it as well. Um, so if I use it for trivets or coasters, things like that, I don't have to worry about somebody putting, you know, a really hot plate on there. I think it can go up to, it's either 400 or 425 degrees. So that's pretty significant. So I want to explain a little bit of why I, I go with that. Now this white that I'm putting down, I usually put down something, whether it's a clear or a color on the base. And that just helps mainly with colors flowing on the surface a little easier. And this particular color here is just the uh, stone coat base tint. And so that's why when I uh, play with the colors on top of it, I can get some interesting cells and some uh, nice depth happen in there. I usually put a little bit on the side just so that the wood kind of has a little bit of a varnished feel to it when I'm done. And we are ready to go. I just want to make sure I'm in the view here. All right. Clean off my hands just a little bit. Get out some air bubbles and then on with the colors. There's been a lot of questions going around about do you use a heat gun versus a torch and I definitely use both but I have to say that my go-to thing is a heat gun kind of acts like a paintbrush to me so I really really like that let's see how do I want to do this I'll do I think I'm going to start with a darker color and go from there No rhyme or reason, I'm kind of just kind of playing around, having some fun. I'll do a little touch of yellow in there. Maybe it'll pick it up after I do my swipe here. Today I'm going to use my silicone spatula, which I really like. I think it's just an icing spatula, but the silicone makes it really easy to clean up. But I also like it for the control. I'll wipe it off real quick on a 
cup. Not sure here. We'll have to see what happens here. The light colors going over the purple might have been a mistake. Let's see what we can do. The drips are looking pretty cool on the other side. I'll have to show you that later. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of pink over here. Okay, maybe I'll add a lot of pink over there. the stone base I'm sorry um, base tent only downside about the spatula is that it's hard to tell how much you're actually pushing down. Whereas with the paper, you can kind of see the line it creates. All right, I'm not sure if this is a hit or miss. on this. We're right, getting some cell definition in here where I add a little bit of white to it and did the final swipe. I'm not sure any cell activity is going to happen here. Do I want some or do I not want some? Hmm. Not sure if I'm done yet. All right. I'm going to be a little bold here. This will also add in a, a lot of nice contrast too. Yeah, I kind of hold my breath too sometimes. All right, so I'm going to dribble a little color here. And kind of blow that out that way. So that way it doesn't look like I kind of dribbled a little color there. see what happens with this. My son just walked in and he's smirking at me. <laughs> and I'm trying to hold my composure because I'm still really self-conscious about this. But yay, I gotta learn. <laughs> And of course he's whispering, I know where you live. All right, let's bring you in for a close up on this little bright sucker here. All right.
Get some complex cells going on in there. Clearly the intensity of the bright has not shown up that well. But it might when I take it outside when it's cured. Today we're going to play with some colors. It's a bit on the feminine side. I've got some uh, a nice fuchsia in here. I've got, I believe this is called pink sherbet. I'll show the colors at the end of the video. I'll, or always. I'll put some kind of still up that has the images of the colors I use. And then this purple here has a nice little bit of a pearlescent sheen to it. And I believe this is called golden sands. I've been wanting to try this out. And I believe it'll work really well with like beach scene type colors and stuff like that. But I thought it would be really pretty to add to this. And then of course I got a little extra bling if I wanted to throw some of that in there. Okay, we're gonna give this a, um, a base of some of the white stone coat base tint to help out with some effects and all that. So as per normal, I'm using Stone, stone Coat Art Coat Resin. I really like the properties of it and it has always done me well. So I highly recommend it. For normal, I usually put a little bit on the sides. It just gives it a finished touch. I don't have a problem with colors running over the edge, and it doesn't have to be solid, but I do like it to have a kind of a varnished finished look, and the resin will do that for me. So that makes me really happy, and it's kind of a nice mix. Or compromise, I should say, not mix. Okay. Use these a few times. You need some fresh ones. I'm better than putting on gloves on your hands when they're already sweaty from the previous gloves. <laughs> I don't know how nurses and doctors do it all the time. I guess their gloves have the powder stuff in it and it probably helps make it a little bit easier. see me point my hot, um, heat gun at an angle and that helps get any kind of dry spots I might have from the side from me applying the first initial coat. All right, hmm, what do I want to do? I'm just gonna play right now. Sometimes you have a plan Sometimes you just got to feel it. I really like that pink. Now the purple is a contrast, but just by barely. I'm gonna put a little bit of bling in here to just add a little something. All right. The golden sands near the bling will probably almost act like gold at this point. And then I'm gonna put this sherbet on top of this fuchsia. Ooh, that almost went gold there. Okay, I don't know what this is going to do now. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of white here to the bottom. All right. 
Now this time I'm going to use some freezer paper. I'm going to do a swipe. I'm going to try and do it. Okay. Hang on, plan B. I'm going to fill in a little bit more color on the top here. Just wanted to make sure it looks like it has color up here and that was intentional instead of it being blank after I've swiped it. Might have to do it again anyway. Okay. So what we want to do is lay it down in the solution so you get a little bit of a lip of color all the way across and then that allows you to bring it down. It kind of catches and drags. Oh, oh thumbs today. You see how it has a little bit of line there? And I'm gonna drag it off intentionally, just like that. Nope. I've got the fans on, that might've been a mistake. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a little bit of a texture in there from the pearlescence of the golden sands and that sherbet color. Hmm. What do I want to do? All right. I'm going to put... We're just playing and experimenting, so we'll see how this goes here. I'm going to do another little swipe, and that's just to see if I can get some, I guess, motion going more than anything. I'm looking for some movement. Let's see if I can get a little piece. Sure. So if I can tilt it off the edge a little bit. about the process right now because I'm still trying to figure it out myself. I don't know why, but I kind of want to draw some lines. Trying to let it drip in my cup a little bit so it's until it starts coming thin. And then do an itty bitty skinny line. You see how it's thicker, thinner, and now it's going thin. Does 
like adding dainty jewelry to it. That's a good way of thinking about it. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it here. It's a little bit different than I normally do, but that's okay. All right, I'm bringing in for a close up. Excuse my hands there. See, it's a little piece, but it's packing pretty good punch. Let's see the little bit of texture in there. Let's try to get it to focus. Oh. I love that in there with the purple and the white. That's really mm -hmm. pretty. Some cells in there happening too. That's interesting. I think this thing is going to develop more and surprise me. Just have a feeling. It doesn't know where to focus. Hi right. everyone, this is Claire Lawrence. I thought I would do a dirty pour. I haven't done one in a while, but I kind of have all these colors mixed up from some projects recently. And well, let's see what they do. So first things first, let me coat my board, get it prepped and ready to go. And then we'll get start with the whole uh, adding colors to a cup. Now I don't wanna do that ahead of time as far as put the colors in the cup because uh, with resin colors, they will have a tendency to mix a little bit more so than like acrylic paints for some reason and they can get muddy and we don't we definitely don't want muddy colors so let me get moving on this there's no real plan i'm just kind of playing today so it's good sometimes to just go with a without a plan and play it's very freeing I have a project that I'm working on that has a definite plan to it, and I have to be very careful and you know meticulous with it. But sometimes it's fun to just mm. let it go and play with the colors. All right, so I got my base on there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to the side just for the benefit of the camera here. I mean, otherwise you can stare at a a white thing, and that's not so much fun. So. Let me move this over out here. That should work. Okay, so I've got a bunch of fluorescents. I've got some purples. Um, two different shades of purples. A pink, golden sands color, and then some bling in there. Um, kind of leaning towards the pinks and the purples. And I think that will work out pretty good. So I'm going to start with... Oh. I'm seeing some of the color from the bottom here show through the cup. I was like, eek, I got a dirty cup. I'm going to start with a little bit of white just to get this going. Let's see. A little purple in here. This is a really pretty metallic purple. And then this purple is pretty dark. So I don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes you don't know, and even when you play with the same colors over and over again, you'll get a different reaction or a... They just behave differently, just from how it flows out of the cup, where it flows to the cup. All right, I'm being a little risk taker. A little bit of fluorescent pink in there. Don't know what's gonna happen. But sometimes you just gotta... Hmm, you know what? Change plan on that one. I'm going to jump to the, I don't want to do that. Okay. I don't know, Gut's telling me to put something in between the fluorescent and the next color. So, I got that. So we'll do this. It's kind of a pale pink gold color. It's really pretty. It'd be great for like a little girl who was really dainty and stuff. Me, I wasn't so dainty when I was little. I was more of a tomboy. Okay, 
My glitter might sink. Don't know. We'll find out. All right. Back to the pink. Let's throw a little bit more purple in there. I'll do the really pretty purple with the pearlescent. And then I think I'm gonna end with some white. All right, maybe I've been watching too much mixed media girl with all her dirty pores. <laughs> yeah, Marcy, I talked about you. <laughs> all right, let me get my canvas back in here and see if I can center it up again. Hey, that's not too bad. Okay. So I've got my kids off. Well, one of them off for summertime, but he's gonna take a summer class at the community college. And then the other one's about to graduate from high school this week. So my kids are around more so than normal. Hang on, let me get the bedroom out. So I'm trying to practice more and more with the videotaping, but doing it by myself, to be honest with you. So now with an audience, I'm a little bit more self-conscious. All right, I'm kind of doing a wide tree ring. I don't know why, it just, it's talking to me. Oh, that looks pretty right there. Speaking of audience, I got my son coming in. Oh. Hey. there that's pretty okay do a little heat and then I'm gonna move it see what happens That area there looks really pretty. Ah, listen to all the dribbles. Okay. A little bit of a spaghetti mess. That was on me when I stopped it. But these are really pretty. I'm kind of tempted to, believe it or not, do a swipe in the middle of this. If I were going to swipe, what kind of color should I use? Hmm. I kind of want to do something light and bright. Okay. This might freak everybody out. Bright paint, but I've kind of got something in mind here. I've got four white corners. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. All right.
Now I'm doing it again. really liking how this fluorescent and this fuchsia blend together after you move them. Sure, it doesn't look like it would do that when you start pouring it down, but sometimes you just never know how colors are gonna to react together. And uh, it's reacting pretty. We like it. Okay. A little bit of heat again, and I'm gonna go across in a different direction. Okay, sometimes things happen by accident. I'm just curious. Now, can I do that intentionally? Look, it looks like it folded over. Almost. Nope. I don't know if I could do it. Okay, this looks like a little bit of a mistake for me flicking it around. So let's just make that more of an intentional mistake. Sometimes weird things happen with design and you're left with an odd space. And one thing I learned very well in design school was if it's something there, you gotta make it look like it's intentionally designed that, for that reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and put color here on the corners. I don't normally do this, but because color ran off, probably most of the sides, it'll look more intentional. And I'm okay with it being clear there. I'll add a little bit more color over here. There we go. All right, this is turning out pretty interesting. A little bit more heat. Hey, Brian. Hey, is there sound like? Huh? Is, is there audio? Yeah, I'm recording a little bit. Yeah, here. So you can record the conversation? Oh, I already am. <laughs> Say hi. hi. <laughs> All right, that's it for the day. Um, let me bring you in for a close up. Let me clean up my hands a little bit more before I grab my phone. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's kind of the look above. Sorry, I'm moving you around so much there. All right, let me go in. It'll focus in real well. So there's a lot of subtle colors and lines in there. This is going to be really interesting when it comes to detail shots when it gets done. And I like the fact that there's just a little bit of cells. It doesn't always have to have a ton of cells. I really like the blends of the movement and stuff. Front gate open. Oh, that would be my hubby. He's got the whole house wired up and studio wired up, so we know when somebody's coming in. All right. I think that looks pretty good. All right. I am going to do another dirty pork because I've got so many of these colors left. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a bright color as my base. And then the dirty pour is going to be primarily fluorescence. So this sucker is going to be right. I'm getting close to the working time of my resin. And uh, 
I'm using stone coat and it's got a really nice working time. I have pushed it almost to two hours. Well, this is a bright yellow. Um, so it comes in handy when you've got some colors left over and it's like, oh, wait a minute, I can still play with this. It hasn't set up. So that's what we're doing. A little bit on the sides there, give it a nice little shiny coat there. Yeah, it's definitely thicker. Hasn't set up though. Um, dirty pour just a little bit ago and <laughs> that's what's left in the cup isn't that pretty no oh, right into the cup here we go all right let's see what would be a good color to put on top of that mess let's do a little bit of white to start off with so what I'm going to do is I'm primarily going to be using fluorescence and I'm going to put in occasional white base tint in there to see if has an effect or not we'll see okay so I've got a pink here which is actually a combination of a pink and a coral pink from Lores and it's really pretty so let's see if I can put this over here I don't know if I can put it over here where you guys can see what I'm doing or not but that's the color I'm using right now see that's really pretty. Very, very, very bright. Let me get out as much as I can here. All right, there's that. And I'm gonna go orange next because that'll be in the next shade that will easily blend from that pink color out. Add a little bit of glitter because because I can this is that halo glitter from uh, just resin I always call it disco ball in a in a cup all right let me see if I can do a little bit more pink I don't know if I can Ooh, I'm pushing it on this resin I think I'm right about an hour and a half right now. Yeah, that was a little bit. And I got some more of this pink left. It's kind of a nice fuchsia pink. It's not really a um, fluorescent, but it is definitely a nice bright. So this might be our contrast color. on top of that and the last color will be the white which will actually be the first color going down so that'll work out pretty well so the plan is is to pour a puddle and then do a big swipe kind of going zigzag across the board and see what happens if I can get the white out of the container I know I'm talking you through this a whole bunch hopefully this isn't that bad Last time I put the board off to the side and I mixed right in the center. That might not be a bad idea if I do a dirty cup pour the next time. I didn't want it to sit in the cup, which is why I've got the base on here. All right, we have our mixture. It's rather interesting. All right, let's see now. I think what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to go shoot that's almost enough right there I'm looking 
for my spatula. Ever so lightly of a touch on here. I want to see if I can do some thin lines with my spatula. So basically, I'm looking for medium lines. Oh, I got some thin there. I'll just turn it on the edge, and that might do. Wider. See if I can get some some white out. If I can, you know what direction I'm going to go now. It's a little bit different than I normally do. And it's definitely showing some glitter. I'm gonna throw some thin lines in there. I think that'll help make things a little bit more interesting. I found that it always helps when you're drawing lines or you want something to go from edge to edge. That's probably the better way to put it. Is to always start off just off the edge. And that way you don't have one of those like start, stop, start, stop looking kind of things where you have a blank space right next to your edge. All right, I think that's enough bling for this thing. Let's see. A little bit more heat, see what's going to happen. This might be one of those pieces that um, a second coat might come in handy. I don't know, it's still talking to me like I need to do stuff. Here. Okay, that's not dramatic. There we go. There's some more drama. What I'm trying to do is move it around with the um, heat gun and maybe create some lacing. That will help. I think it needed a little contrast. Yeah, it's starting to get stringy.
there. I'm gonna use this really dark purple to bump up the uh, the depth on it, and then I might be really happy with that. Ooh, yes, I think so. Ooh. Excuse me, so I have a runaway here. Intentional. Okay, that. I think we're good. see what I can do with this. This may be a good stopping point for now. Um, we'll wait and see what happens if anything develops from it and go from there. Right, let's bring you in for a close-up for now. If something changes, I will update this. So uh, this is the piece right here. There we go, now we're focused. And you see that purple is really, really pretty. It's got a nice pearlescent to it. Almost has a celestial look up close. Might be distracting with all this background on my table. If I had some clear, I'd probably run some lines in with that dark purple. And I create some extra depth in there. Oop, color shifted big time. Let's try that. That's better. Oh, it still wants to shift. Okay. 